about all those times when you were happy to get out of this mm, relationship right. or you needed to get out of a relationship. So I started thinking about that. It's an interesting thing because I'm not totally speaking from personal experience, uh, which, uh, you know, certain people have issues with. You know, people start to think, okay, well, is he just, you know, is he playing a game or something? Right. So it, it brings up all these other issues that I've never had to deal with because mm -hmm. I don't usually write kind of these thematic things. If I'm writing it's, uh, mostly instrumental music, and usually are these concepts, but they're, you know, not so uh, maybe put into relationship types of things. I like that you uh, that you brought that up, because this is different music than your kind of instrumental uh, the instrumental music that you usually do. So let's then bring in the people that you talked about. I mean, that you played this with. So um, you play with a lot of different musicians in a lot of different contexts. Yeah. How were was this group? that you put together for the Scarlet Woman record. How was this the right people to, to do this? And a lot of the same people are here tonight playing with you. Yeah, it's the exact same lineup mm -hmm. in the record. Um, it, it took a second to actually figure out what that was. Uh, clearly, Harley um, has played with me. This was released under the Ogs 11 banner, which is a, a band I've run that was sort of set up to play populist music, if that makes any sense. So. And do different things and not be afraid to do a record that's a boss number record and then something totally different. So Harley's been in that band for a long time. Uh, Molly um, has a, I've had a long background of playing with Molly Whitaker. And she seemed a bit obvious. And it was also kind of a, it was in the back of my mind, I was thinking Caruso too. Mm. Sort of an operatic mm. voice rather than somebody that was trying to be a blues singer. Mm. Could hear that blues soundtrack, sound oh, check too. Yeah. It was a yeah. blues singer. Molly's an opera singer. Right. And I thought that would be really interesting to have that kind of sound on top of that. Mm. So that uh, she was like a clear idea. Um, Ed Kornhauser, a lot of this music also is sort of pre-bebop jazz, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, right? roots, uh, roots music. Uh, yeah, so yeah. swing music or New Orleans jazz are different things. Ed's great. He's, he can play a little stride. He's got that Earl Garner thing. Mm -hmm. There's a, he can go a bunch of different places. And I, I okay, we got to get that. Mm. That's a key part of this too. Yeah, there's a definitely a kind of a honky tonkish uh, kind a of bit feel of a, a little to that. Yeah, there. a little country there. Yeah, all correct. These different things. Yeah. Definitely like a pre-electric mm. music, uh, which is funny for us on stage playing right. with all these amplifiers <laughs> <laughs> and right. stuff. Mm -hmm. But. Um, so that was sort of the idea, and then I had been playing with uh, Branson and Jerome in a band called The Scorpion Decides in uh, Phoenix when I lived out there, and um, Branson has been doing a lot of interesting keyboard stuff, and uh, Jerome moved out here and has been living in La Jolla, so I thought, well, um, I want to incorporate these two bands together, so I thought that was the perfect thing, was to uh, bring them in and have them play these parts. So that was how that, that came out, it was kind of happenstance and then also like people coming into your lives. Uh, I find that like people come into my lives and that kind of changes how I what I'm writing or what I'm doing and then um, but then also there's the music you know you have write music and you say okay I need these things mm -hmm. I need a French horn player and a cello player and I need to so you have to go find yeah, those so you people have to go find one. and then sometimes those people just I mean I, I actually I'm I've been playing with Caitlin Crow this cello player recently and it's great because I have this music that I've written over the years and I've never had a cello player. I've never been able to find a cello player that's comfortable improvising and all these things. So there's all this backlog of stuff that I've always wanted to do but wasn't available. So, so there's kind of these two things, I guess, like one foot, two foot, going back and forth. Yeah, it's like when you're looking for a red car on the road, they're all red. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing, they come up on you. Okay, well then, let's talk, um, let's, ask the, let's ask the San Diego Music Award question. So la uh, this year uh, you won for, as I said, Encinitas and everything after yeah. a five-volume uh, set that was released over five months, different shows, yeah. uh, quite an epic thing. And again, congratulations on that. Um, but I see that that hasn't really changed the fact that you still do musical theater and you still do those other kind of things. Um, where has it impacted you, uh, winning that award? Um, I think people, I think people take me more seriously in some ways. Um, I've been able to break down a few doors, glass ceilings that I, I mean, I've done, I do, uh, I've done and I do a wide variety of stuff, and understandably, if I'm trying to play a restaurant gig and somebody finds a uh, video of me on YouTube playing free jazz, <laughs> you get a little freaked out. So, um, 
so the name behind that can uh, has helped to sort of uh, say like, well, no, no matter what he's doing, or maybe I don't understand what he's doing, but he is serious about what he's doing. So he that's must be a, a pro thing. if he's one of the more. Fingers crossed on right. that one. Yeah. Um, and it's, other than that, it's been. I I, I said this recently. I think it's going to take a few years to figure out like how how that affects me and stuff. Um, clearly, I put out a lot of music. I've released a lot of music, and. Um, so we'll see in the next uh, maybe 10 years how that's all plays out. So then the, uh, let's talk just a little bit then and dig in to the, um, that other side. And it really, in the, the arc of your, all the music you play, you playing uh, musical theater doesn't actually